Good morning. I'm Chris Shabrett, President and CEO of the Washington Biotechnology and Biomedical Association at the 15th Annual Life Science Northwest Innovation Conference. Life Science Innovation Northwest Conference here in Seattle, Washington. I'm joined this morning by Alexis Kaczynski. She's Assistant Professor at the uh, Center for Infectious Disease Research. Alexis, welcome. Great. Thrilled to have you here. Thanks. Good to um, be here. Can you tell us a little bit more about the Center for Infectious Disease Research and then also about your role there? Yeah. Um, so the center was originally founded in the 70s um, and has really been focused on infectious diseases, um, primarily of the developing world since. Um, so we focus primarily on HIV, tuberculosis, and malaria. Okay. And I think what's really unique about the center is that we're really trying to take novel and innovative approaches to mm -hmm. combat these diseases. Wow. So they've really ridden the world. Um, huge disease burden for a very long time right. um, and traditional conventional approaches just haven't worked. So we've done a lot to integrate systems biology into our approaches and uh, we're really just trying to do uh, whatever we can to take you know, new approaches in order to really make a difference in these diseases worldwide. Can you tell us a little bit about maybe one or two of the new approaches that you're you're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so first I would say that we're, we're somewhat agnostic in our approaches. So if a new technology or a new approach comes up, um, we really try to apply it if it is in fact the best approach. Okay. Um, but one of the themes that I think brings these new approaches together is the idea of systems biology. Mm -hmm. And this is really the idea that we would take um, data sets, all sorts of data. So one data example might be um, information about how the malaria parasite interacts with the person that it infects. Okay. Another um, might be information about someone who has uh, tuberculosis and has for a long time but hasn't yet had active disease okay. as compared to someone who does have active tuberculosis. And then we integrate all these different data sets using computational and technological advances um, in order to really make predictions. And these predictions are um, really powerful because they don't just come from um, a feeling about what might uh, be the right approach. They really come from sort of a tried and true, tested okay. um, and rigorous way of integrating data sets. Then we go and test those hypotheses um, and really try to come up with new approaches. And already this approach has been quite successful in Fantastic. the diseases that we work on, which have really been um, troubling to work on for a long That's time. Great. Now, I understand your group is relatively new. Tell me yes. a little bit more about your group and what you're going to try to accomplish. Right. So um, a lot of my work focuses mm -hmm. on the malaria parasite mm -hmm. um, and its interaction with um, the person that it infects. So one of the things that we know about the malaria parasite, it's transmitted by mosquito. Um, and once it's transmitted by mosquito, the parasite rapidly goes to the liver. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't go to the liver, you never get sick. And if you can kill the parasite in the liver, you can actually have long-lasting immunity against subsequent infection. Wow. And so we're really trying to understand what it is that's special about the liver mm -hmm. um, and why the parasite relies on it so heavily, and then take away those few things that the malaria parasite needs in the yeah. liver in order to ensure that people don't get disease. Okay. The other thing we're really interested in is we've developed new technologies and approaches in order to study the malaria parasite mm -hmm. in liver. It's a very tricky thing to study yeah. because to get the parasite, you need to hand dissect mosquitoes. Wow, that um, must be hard. Yeah, it takes some getting used to. <laughs> we have really, really a great staff who, who's very, very good at it. I'm okay. Um, but I think that the technologies and approaches we've developed to study malaria are applicable to a lot of diseases. And the reality is, is that in the areas that are malaria endemic, people are infected with a wide variety of different diseases. Yep. And so, you know, we're very, um, we try to be very efficient. When we develop a technology and approach to study malaria, it's as easy as walking down the hall to apply, apply that approach to tuberculosis or okay. HIV. And so we're doing a lot of things looking at different types of infections and, right. and how we could study those uh, infections, <clears throat> both using the same technologies and what happens when somebody's infected with both diseases. So a lot of our viewers may or may not know about malaria, yeah. right, as a disease. Mm -hmm. You probably think about it as a developing country disease. Yeah. Why should we care about malaria and, and working and curing malaria? Right. Um, I think that there are a lot of reasons. Um, I think that 
Um, the, the first is, is that it really does impact people all around the world. And I think um, the reality is, is that we're all very interconnected. And mm -hmm. um, what happens in sub-Saharan Africa absolutely impacts us here. Um, in this age where people are traveling all over the world right. constantly, uh, we're not as far apart as we once were. Um, I also think that um, travelers um, get malaria quite frequently. Um, and I think that the reality is is that um, when people are traveling, they aren't necessarily prepared um, for malaria. One of the sort of joys of working on the disease is that people come and tell you them, their malaria stories. I think in the U.S., a lot of people do, don't, don't you know, have a close relative who have been, has right. been infected with malaria but a lot more people have been influenced by malaria than yeah. we realize. And those people really come out of the woodwork when you work on malaria right. and every holiday party is a story from someone who wow. was infected with malaria during their travels or um, ha have a relative who knows somebody or lived for a time right. in the developing mm -hmm. world. Um, tuberculosis is, is another really interesting example in that we now have extremely um, and in some cases, totally drug-resistant tuberculosis. Right. Right. Tuberculosis is spread um, by air and by people coughing. Um, this can off obviously happen very, very rapidly and on a plane. And it happens in the U.S. quite frequently, right? Quite frequently. Um, the, the bulk of the burden <clears throat> is, in fact, sometimes elsewhere. Right. But all it would take is someone getting on a single plane and right. coughing on said plane, right. and then it would be the exact same scenario. And you mentioned HIV as well, other, right. another disease that you can learn from your research as well. Right, <clears throat> absolutely. And I think one of the really unique things about the center is because we do study all of these diseases under one roof, mm -hmm. um, science is um, sometimes uh, surprising in where one discovery will lead. Right. And so I think um, even if you know it's not someone's first passion how to study and rid the world <clears throat> of malaria, although I yep. think that that's a, a very worthy cause, um, the techniques and technologies that we develop against malaria could very, very easily translate to mm -hmm. other things. And so I really think the way that we're doing science and integrating systems biology really allows us not only to make um, you know, real discoveries in terms of vaccines and drugs and diagnostics, but also sets up a platform and a paradigm yeah. so that when the next threat emerges, we can actually apply our tools and technologies very right. rapidly and efficiently to that next threat. So Fantastic. I think the way that we're doing it is, um, mm. yes, uh, I get up every morning really thinking that I might be able to make a difference against malaria, sure. the other diseases that we work on today, but I think we're doing things in a smart way so that we won't just make a difference today, but that we're in a better position to respond to things moving forward. And you've been at the Research Institute for about five years, you told yeah. me. Uh, what brought you there? Um, so uh, my background is in um, technology development around cancer. And so it was, um, for some people, a surprising shift. But um, for me, you know, the technologies that we had developed, I really thought um, could make a real impact and a real difference mm -hmm. for diseases that impact the developing world. And I had done a fair bit of travel, and I felt and still feel really passionately that I wanted to work on a disease and diseases that make a difference to people worldwide, right. sometimes in um, areas where they don't have the scientific infrastructure yep. um, to, to eliminate those diseases themselves. Okay. And so, um, you know, I read and read and read, I'm a scientist, um, and uh, started reading about malaria, and I really felt like there was a void there, and okay. that some of the things that I had worked on in the past could be useful to the mm -hmm. field. I hope they could be useful. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think that, um, the center is really this unique place where, where people are existing in this sort of void of how do you bring new approaches? How do you bring systems biology? How do you bring new technologies yeah. to these worldwide infectious diseases? And so that's what brought me there and that what, that's what um, makes me stay. Well, you're obviously very passionate about your work. Um, it's a pleasure to meet with you and talk to you today. Yeah. Thank you for being at the conference today. Thank and, you. And uh, good luck on your great research. It's been a great conference. Yeah. And uh, for Chris Rivera from Life Science Innovation Northwest, have a great day.